And so we move beyond the quarter quell and we have more tales of the Hunger Games. Literary gore will follow, be warned. The 26th Games took place in mountainous hills. It featured playful wolves and heavy rockfalls and lasted for a total of 12 days. Animals in the arena will often cause trouble for any tributes they encounter, but it's rare for them to be a source of support, which was in fact the case this year. The victor was Jericho Clay, aged 15, from District 9. During the bloodbath, Jericho managed to grab a loaf of bread and a bow and arrow, but he was stabbed in the arm by Ceres, from 2. However, he managed to escape and climb the hills. After feeling like he was sufficiently far enough from the cornucopia, he was able to tend to his wound. When Jericho was about to fall asleep upon a tree branch on the first night, he noticed a pack of three wolves trying to climb the tree to him. Unlike most other tributes, he realised that they were not actually trying to kill him, but were in fact just very friendly, a realisation that likely saved his life. Instead of shooting them with his arrows, he broke off bits of bread and dropped them from the tree for them. When Jericho awoke the next morning, the wolves were still by the tree. He explored the hills and the wolves came with him. These wolves proved to be very loyal, and there were several occasions over the next few days when he was saved by them, after they alerted him to the presence of others by growling whenever they sensed other tributes were nearby. This allowed Jericho to hide, whilst these other tributes unknowingly passed him. One evening, the wolves brought Jericho a spear that had been left by a tribute who had attacked another pack of wolves. He used the spear to kill a turkey, and after cooking it over an open fire, he gave some of the meat to the wolves as well. As Jericho slept, the wolves continued guarding him and alerting him to any danger. One night, rockfalls were triggered near to where Jericho slept. He managed to climb a tree, but unfortunately one of the wolves was killed by a falling rock. These rockfalls killed Edison from 3 and Citrona from 11 and led Jericho to abandon his base and move inwards towards the cornucopia. The next day, further rockfalls were triggered which killed two of the remaining four tributes. However, as Jericho was far enough from the perimeter, he was not affected and realised that he would have the final fight with Ceres. Jericho had become attached to the wolves and ordered them to stay where he left them so that they were not hurt by Ceres. But little did he know that at the time they were following him back to the cornucopia. Once the two boys met, Ceres got the upper hand and stabbed Jericho in the stomach. But as Ceres was about to slit Jericho's throat, the wolves jumped from behind and attacked Ceres by continually biting his neck, which eventually killed him. As Jericho lay in pain, the wolves waited with him until the hovercraft arrived. Upon winning, Jericho was nicknamed the Wolf Whisperer by the capital, and requested to adopt the two surviving wolves and take them back to District 9. This request was ultimately approved by the capital, and he lived in Victor's village with his wolves. The 27th Games took place in rocky caves, they became notorious for featuring flesh-eating beetles and also cave collapses. The games lasted for eight days in total. This year it became very difficult for game makers to retrieve some tributes bodies due to a design fault in the cave roofs, but this in turn added an extra aspect to the games that greatly affected its outcome. The victor was Farrell McCain, aged 16 from District 4. Within minutes of the game's beginning, many tributes had cut themselves and were bleeding after falling onto or brushing past the jagged rocks in the Cornucopia Cave. Pharrell and his district partner, Acropora, followed the trails of blood from various escape tributes and created a lethal team, killing off Hudson from 7 and Doris from 9 within the first 5 minutes. For the next days, they hunted tirelessly for a source of water whilst working together to capture insects for food. However, after coming across beetles crawling from the flesh-eaten corpse of Camilla from 2, the pair realised that not all the insects were edible. Soon, they also came to realise that the only water in the games had been bottled water in the cornucopia, which had been very swiftly snatched up after the games had begun. Over the following days, Pharrell and Acropora also encountered several tributes who appeared to have become insane with thirst and so they rather easily killed these tributes. By doing this, it raised their chances of winning, and they started to be sent water bottles and food from sponsors. One morning, as Pharrell and Acropora were roaming into an uncharted section of the caves, they came across the career pack, who was sleeping in the middle of a small cave. 
Acropora suggested setting some of the beetles on the career pack, and so they carefully used water bottles to take beetles from the nearby corpse of Jetty from Six, and they quietly dropped them into the career's cave. As they ran off, they heard screams and panic from the careers, which were ended when Jupiter from Two killed off Diorite and Velvet, both from One, due to their loud hysteria, which could attract other tributes. With only a handful of tributes left, the cave started to collapse from the perimeter inwards. Whilst running back to the cornucopia, Pharrell realised what he would have to do, and he tripped Acropora. This led her to collapse upon the ground and ultimately be crashed by the then imminent cave collapses. As an injured Acropora screamed obscenities at Pharrell, he kept running, and ultimately had the final battle with Polly from Six in the central cave. They were both empty-handed, but Pharrell managed to kick her head straight into a jagged rock face before gouging her eyes until she died. After returning to District 4, Pharrell suffered for several years after what he had seen, and he developed an intense fear of any kind of insect. However, after receiving support from his mentor, Mags, he got better and went on to get married and have children. The 28th games were set in a bushy forest. They featured some deadly wild boars and also a roaming wildfire, and they lasted for a total of 11 days. In a reversal of tradition, this year's strongest alliance was not that of the career districts, but instead belonged to the outlying districts. It is often thought that one of this outlying group could have won if they were not in such a difficult arena. This year's victor was Cobalt Townsend, aged 18 from District 1. During the bloodbath, the only careers to make it out alive were Cobalt and Lucifer from 2, after Garnet from 1 and Cassia from 2 were beaten senseless by the very muscular Wisterian from 11. Lucifer managed to shoot some of the outlying pack with arrows, but only Angelica from 10 was killed by him here, whilst Cobalt grabbed some bread and water before the pair escaped. Cobalt and Lucifer hid within the outskirts of the arena and killed wild boars for food. After several days, they skirted the perimeter and eventually found the outlying pack, who they decided to hide near. Inspired by the start of the previous year's games, they cut themselves and made a trail of their own blood which led to the outlying pack. This plan succeeded in attracting wild boars who savaged the outlying pack that night. The ongoing chaos also triggered an argument amongst this group, who turned on each other and left only Wisterian and Honeysuckle, both from Eleven, to be alive. The next morning, a fire roamed through the arena, obliterating anything in its way. Cobalt and Lucifer hid and witnessed tributes running from the fire. Therefore, they started trapping tributes between themselves and the fire, which allowed them to kill more and more of the surviving tributes. After killing Sparks from Three, and thereby getting the number of tributes down to four, Lucifer tackled Cobalt to the ground, but Cobalt eventually got the upper hand and stabbed Lucifer through the brain with an arrow. When there were just three tributes left, the fire intensified and spread from the outside of the arena, making Cobalt, Honeysuckle and Lumbra, from Seven, sprint to the cornucopia for safety. Once they made it back, both Honeysuckle and Lumbra attacked Cobalt, but he successfully fought them off by using his arrows to stab them, and he emerged victorious. Upon returning to District 1, Cobalt became an arena designer at the District 1 Training Academy. He became notorious among potential tributes for including extremely harsh conditions in these arenas, but he always justified this by claiming that if they were reaped and lived to tell the tale, then they would thank him for this, a claim that was later proved to be correct. 29th games occurred in abandoned quarries. They featured some cunning owls, but as they only lasted for three days, they did not last long enough for any major event to occur. Excluding the amphitheatre days, this year's games are the shortest in the history of the Hunger Games. The victor this year was Septimus Paddock, age 17, from District 2. During the bloodbath in the lowest section of the quarries, Septimus quickly grabbed machetes and used these to kill a record seven tributes in the opening two minutes. This immediately made Septimus a strong competitor in the eyes of others including his fellow careers, and due to this he infamously slaughtered the rest of the career pack on the first night. Throughout the second day, Septimus killed owls for food, while spying on other tributes from the highest level of the quarries. When a tribute was close enough to him, 
he would chase and slaughter them before returning to this vantage point and starting this process all over again. By the time there were only three tributes remaining, it was obvious that Septimus was going to win, and this even led one tribute, Dido, from three, to kill herself in order to avoid facing him. The other two, Mariah and Jule, both from five, tried to kill Septimus together, but he took them both out by knocking them to the ground and strangling them simultaneously, thereby taking the win. Upon winning, Septimus proved to be a favourite among citizens of the capital. However, in the districts, he was nicknamed Psycho Septimus because of his record kill count, 18 kills in total, and the fact that he hardly showed any emotion during or after the games. Septimus went on to work with tributes in the capital's training centre during the lead-up to future games. The 30th games took place in a sweltering jungle. They featured some insane chimpanzees, an extreme tropical storm, and lasted for a total of 15 days. An old saying is that you should never judge a book by its cover. This was the case this year with the shortest victor in the history of the games at just 4 foot 10, or 148 centimetres. The victor was Freya Honka, aged 15 from District 8. When the gong sounded, Freya froze with fear, but after coming to her senses, she aimed for some water. Although she tripped over the dead body of Spring from 6, she saw the carnage occurring around her, and instead of going for the water, she grabbed some apples next to where she had landed, before scrambling to her feet and running for her life. Freya spent the first few days walking as far as possible from the career pack, who had set up camp in the cornucopia. Like many other tributes, she was affected by the intense heat, searching for water along the way, but to no avail. In a rare move for the games, each tribute was allocated a bottle of water on the third day, which was placed in the cornucopia. Although Freya was extremely tempted by this, she knew that this would almost certainly lead to death at the hands of the careers. She was right, with seven tributes being slaughtered whilst trying to grab their water, and only one tribute, Jerome from three, actually managing to get out the cornucopia alive and with his water. After starting to experience grave symptoms of dehydration after several days without water, Freya came across Jerome and spotted his bottle of water. She waited for the right moment to steal it, and luckily for her, he was attacked by a screaming chimpanzee. As he tried to defend himself, Freya spotted the bottle that Jerome had accidentally kicked in her direction whilst he was being clobbered by the chimp. She grabbed the water and sprinted in another direction. After many surviving tributes were still going insane from thirst, a tropical storm was triggered by the game makers in order to give these dehydrated tributes a chance of survival. Being deft in the use of materials, Freya used the branches from different trees in order to create a makeshift shelter. The storm also allowed fruit to flourish, which allowed her to eat. One evening, Roster, from 12, begged to be let into Freya's shelter in exchange for his spear. She accepted and Roster shared lots of information with her, such as the careers having turned on each other after their supplies had been blown up by Solaris from five, and the fact that there were only a maximum of five tributes remaining. Whilst Roster slept, Freya now realised that there was a chance that she could actually win, and so she killed Roster with the spear. The next morning, Freya tracked where the chimpanzees were resting, whilst being careful not to alert their attention to her location. Eventually, the two remaining careers, Remus and Cleo, from two, found Freya and chased her through the jungle, but she deliberately ran near the chimpanzee's lair. At first, the chimpanzees hunted her, but then saw the much larger tributes that were chasing her. They immediately turned and went for these career tributes instead. Despite managing to slay one chimpanzee each, Remus and Cleo were no match for the whole troop, with the chimpanzees squashing them to the ground and leaving Freya to escape to victory. After winning, Freya returned to District 8 and opted to live a quiet life where she rarely left the victor's village. So once again everyone, thank you for watching. And I thought about including music in the background, but I've actually decided not to. Let me know what you think about that. And also I'd love for you to let me know which of the games that i featured in this series so far have you most enjoyed reading and which would you most like to see put into a full film as well. Just curious to see what everyone thinks. Thank you once again for all the comments and support. It's really great to see that people are enjoying these and I'm going to be making more.